Yeah, so hello once again from my side, um, and thank you, Georg, for introducing me. Uh, so I will start with this in investigating constructivist paradigms in the digital humanities. So searching for uh, constructions in, for example, in the index of the Digital Humanities Conference seems like a really easy task. You find uh, the following statements, and maybe you already knew them. Ideas are constructed, terms are constructed, models are constructed, database are constructed. So everything in the DH seems to be constructed. So the question I would like to address today is, um, are constructivist approaches uh, taken for granted in DH scholarship and uh, what are the promises, implications and pitfalls of uh, constructivism? Paradigms following Thomas Kuhn are guiding ideas and, uh, that determines perspectives, reliable questions, and provide models and values, as well as use cases within a research uh, community. For the DH, uh, we could sp uh, speak of more of a network or multi-paradigmatic um, DH. I argue today that constructivist paradigms still have a profound impact on the DH epistemic cultures, namely on the ways in which we think and collaborate uh, beyond interdisciplinary boundaries. But we still uh, need to make the assumption explicit in order to describe the interplay of paradigms in the DH. In other words, we need to discuss the epistemological um, uh, blind spots of constructivism. Therefore, uh, this short presentation is about constructivism as one paradigm in DH scholarship enactments of constructivism in standard use cases, as well as pitfalls and potentials of constructivism. And the fourth point will be future proving and questioning um, constructivism. Uh, regarding the history of science, there is not one constructivism, but rather many variations of constructivism. Uh, one could not only distinguish between first generation and second generation of constructivism, which are strongly influenced by the SDS. Um, Nevertheless, it is important to acknowledge that um, various forms of constructivism exhibit uh, significant variations in uh, ontological and epistemological stances. What could be a minimal definition of constructivism look like? So here I got one from Dana Goschlik. Uh, the minimal definition in a two-place relation would be how X constructs Y. And um, in the research um, literature, you find the following defining figures of constructivism. So this move from ontological questions of what to epistemological questions of how uh, the scientific processes are perceived as a second order constructions. And of course, I think this is very important and we could discuss it further, is the departure from notions of truth and uh, the ideal of objectivity to intersubjectivity. And uh, the last point would be um, uh, the connection between the observer and the observed. So the question now is when and how do DH scholars talk about um, constructivism? Uh, I brought um, three examples, and the, uh, the first one is from Yanides et Ali. It's an introduction book in the, into the digital humanities, and they state, in the humanities, epistemological positions that are more or less clear as variants of a not too radical constructivism are particularly common. And another one is from Tanya uh, Clement in the debates of the digital humanities. And she explains methodological perspectives in the social science and in the humanities might jointly engage reflexive processes and constructivist paradigms. And uh, the last and maybe the most prominent one you already know um, is from uh, Johanna Drakta and her, um, her concept of CAPTA, and I will read it out loud. We, we, we receive all data as CAPTA, differences in the, in the etymological roots of the terms data and CAPTA makes the distinction between constructivist and realist approaches clear. CAPTA is taken active, actively while data is assumed to be given, able to record it and observed. So when we look at the discursive form, formation of constructivism in DH, what could be maybe characteristics? So the first one that constructivism often is um, used as a, well, um, discussed as the epistemological premise of humanistic inquiries. And then these entanglements of interpretation and constructions is often used as synonyms. And um, I think one uh, important aspect could be uh, reflexivity to, as a way to address the contingencies of knowledge claims. So, so much about this um, discursive formation. 
but how are constructivist paradigms enacted in digital, um, in digital humanities scholarship? So um, maybe a first use case uh, could be the analysis of constructivism in, the di in, in mixed methods research approaches. So the uh, mixed methods approaches are often graphs as uh, research designs which combine two um, theoretical paradigms, namely social constructivism and uh, critical rat rationalism. But what is the underlying uh, hypothesis here? So the underlying hypothesis here could be different methods construct uh, different epistemic objects, which are, and that's the main thing of mixed methods, which are interconnected and refer to the respective other world. So um, one premise here is the duality of methods addresses the complexity of the research question or the object of investigation. But what about the epistemic discrepancy between these constructions of an object? How do we bridge the gap uh, between these objects? Technically, intersubjective, or within our argumentation, or within uh, the interpretation. Multi-method object constructions require specific levels of integration that need to be negotiated within our research community. So what does mixed method uh, ex exemplify? for thinking about uh, constructivism in the age. Using examples of uh, mixed methods uh, or show the relationship between uh, two very different constructions that uh, have to be negotiated with, with another. And another example to explore the premises and applications of constructivist paradigms might be the analysis of CAPTA in, um, in the context of uh, APIs. So I conducted a really simple Europeana API query storing the information of one of the well-known uh, prints under the wave of Kanagawa by Hukusai. And uh, this slide, you already know that, but uh, it's a response to my request. And why could APIs um, yeah, be an example to investigate constructivist paradigms in the age? Considering our minimal definition, one could formulate, again, an uh, assumption here and that would be like um, the age scholars reconstruct or to use the term like recontextualize uh, contingencies uh, of data settings that originate from situated uh, infrastructure settings. So what is implicated here? Analyzing CAPTA, if we use this term, and not data means dealing with ongoing relational reconfigurations of meaning. Um, so yesterday we had this wonderful uh, meaning junkie, and I think that could be an example here too. And another important aspect would be knowledge production and criticizing aims to exposure the constructiveness of data settings by expounding uh, the conditions in which it is embedded. So when we see here again uh, the response, the API response allows us, for example, to trace back different used ontologies, as you can see here, or controlled vocabulary. There are, I'm trying to visualize it, there are overlaps of constructions here, and each contains very different, uh, uh, different inclusions and exclusions. So that could be another example where we, where we could discuss constructivism in, in the age, and I think there are many more examples, and I hope that we can share them afterwards. And um, yeah, maybe some what are the pitfalls or potentials uh, which are linked to constructivist paradigm in general or uh, for, the uh, for the DH? So constructivist paradigms leads to the proliferation of contingent knowledge claims. This raises, uh, this raises the questions about validity of our data and findings generated within constructivist approaches. And the second one is the coexistence of diverse construction, as you see, and perspectives can make it difficult to achieve data integration or a theoretical integration um, and reconciling these differences while maintaining the richness of diverse perspectives poses a significant, significant challenge in the context, for example, of linked open data and, and uh, open science. And the last one is constructivist paradigms tend to prioritize language, meaning, and perception, often overlooking the materiality and embodied in, uh, dimension of research object. So, um, and instead of a conclusion, I would now like to pose uh, four questions that could maybe open up the space uh, to think about revolutions or our ways of thinking in the DH. In the DH. 
So the first one could be, shall we address more ontological and material questions of what? How can we practice moods of criticism that go beyond merely exposing the constructive nature of phenomena? Do we have to reconsider the relation between evidence, truth, and intersubjectivity uh, so in the light of um, fake news or this kind? And do constructive approaches remain def uh, defensible and desirable in the light of current challenges we encounter as a research community? And these questions um, are like an invitation to the discussion, and I hope that we have the time afterwards. So thank you very much.